Hello folks, how you doing today? This is Ron Shawley here for Celestron Telescopes and for AccuWeather Astronomy on Facebook and also on AccuWeather.com of course. What we're looking at today is we are uh, in the weeks ahead, in the days ahead, we're going to be featuring Celestron Telescopes as a viable source for the average consumer. And I mean that in, in a good way. Uh, there are many companies out there who manufacture telescopes, but Celestron, they have a good, and I mean a good quality telescope that they manufacture. And they have got so many telescopes in their arsenal, uh, refractors, they've got um, I, I, and I'll be the first one to admit I have to re-educate myself when it comes to astronomy equipment, okay? But you're never too old or you're never too young to take up an interest in astronomy, especially today with the way the world is, um, and not to mention what's floating overhead. Uh, with the proper setup, you can see the ISS as it transverses across the horizon, okay? You can see uh, the moon, the sun, the planets, the, the galaxies that are out there. Let's, uh, first of all, let's take a look at what we have here in front of us today. And this is predominantly the telescope that we're going to be uh, focusing on here in the weeks ahead. And we're going to be also focusing on astro astronomy photography. Okay. Probably just called astrophotography. Um, and of course, we're going to cover that here in a minute, but this is the next star version. And what we have here, let's take the camera off so I can show you the different components, okay? This is the next star 5SC, okay? And what we have here, the, the, the primary focal point to this telescope is the control component, okay? It slides right off. This is the computer. Yes, I said computer for the telescope. Um, what makes this a phenomenal telescope, folks, the Next Star series has the capability of searching for anything you want in the heavens, okay? You simply point the telescope through the, through the computer, and, it's, and I'll show you later in a video uh, next week sometime, but you can also go to their website. They have a real good video. That, that shows you step-by-step step how to use the handheld computer and setting up the telescope, okay? But in short, you can find one, two, or three objects in the heavens. You calibrate the telescope to those three, el three elements, okay? It could be the moon and two stars or whatever, okay? And once you calibrate the telescope to the three objects in the sky, okay? The, the telescope then knows exactly where it is on the planet. And you have to type in, I mean, you can program in your um, state, um, the time, the date, and all that, but it's all computerized. So then all you do is go to the handheld and you say you want to look up uh, Mars, okay? And you key it in, the telescope will then automatically transverse right to wherever Mars is at, okay? Now you got to make sure that Mars is out, okay? You want to make sure it's above the horizon in a viewable uh, location. Now in this situation here at our conservation center, here we have uh, um, a confined area. So we have our open fields down there, but, but here if I were to look at Mars, right now Mars is going to be rising shortly and it would be over that direction. Ah, too many trees, right? So I wouldn't be able to see Mars only because we have trees, right? Cool. So you want to make sure you have an open field, preferably up on top of a mountain somewhere is great, away from a lot of the city pollution of light, okay? Now, the telescope that we are looking at, the 5SE Next Star series, some of the basic components, okay? The computer, I mean, the telescope, when it is, when you purchase your telescope, it is so simple. Within five minutes, you can have this thing set up and running, okay? Um, but you get your basic telescope, you get your arm assembly, where you mount your telescope to. And in here, this is your lens cover that goes on to the face of the telescope. Uh, this is your battery compartment down here. This is where you store your batteries. 
and the next star series has two outputs one for a camera output and an auxiliary output okay the camera output which I'll be showing that here in a moment is extremely uh, useful now you can photograph what you're looking at at nighttime okay but you have to have a good SLR camera like a, you know the Canon EOS Nikon etc okay uh, point and shoot will not work um, you need to have a good SLR okay on the telescope there are many features about this telescope it, it incorporates the star bright system it's a high performance coating that is applied to the lens let me see if I can't get over here and, and show you that here's the uh, the lens okay but it actually has a high uh, coating on there that again folks I'm, I'm learning as I go too okay but it has a special coating that allows more light to enter into the telescope and eventually reaching the eyepiece okay the telescope comes with a diagonal piece this is your diagonal piece okay the light comes to the, the mirror from the mirror it bounces up into the eyepiece okay telescope comes with a uh, 25 millimeter um, eyepiece all right which I have to which you just have two sets screws that you can tighten your eyepiece the eyepiece by the way are interchangeable you can put different eyepieces on the telescope now when you go to turn on a telescope okay on the bottom of here we have an off on switch okay and there's also another uh, external port here uh, to calibrate the next to our handheld unit right there but that's your off on switch okay you turn it on that simple and on the LED, it's kind of hard to see it, but the LED will come up. It'll say next door, SE, you know, uh, click the enter button to begin alignment of your telescope. Pretty simple, folks. It walks you through step by step. But again, if you want to see, I'll show you. You can, by moving the, the knobs, we can go, we can pan left and right, okay? And then we have our up and down feature, okay? The telescope will physically, you know, pivot on its axis for uh, up, down, left, and right, okay? And you can also set the speed at which the telescope transverses. Uh, you want to set it at a low speed. When you're looking at um, an object in the heavens, you don't, want it to, you don't want it to be really fast, okay? Because then you hit the button and boom, you've lost the target, okay? That's one of the things you got to remember. This is a... a being able to be patient taking your time and knowing that the object that you're looking at is millions upon millions of light years away so it is extremely hard sometimes the telescope comes with a really cool viewfinder okay this is the viewfinder and real simple you look through here uh, battery operated has an LED um, laser pointer okay that when you look through the sight glass, okay, there's a little red dot in the middle at nighttime that shows up. And that little red dot, you just put that on the target that you're looking for, say the moon or whatever. And that'll pretty much get you in the ballpark, all right? But again, once you have the telescope calibrated, you don't have to worry about the sight too because the computer on board knows where to look uh, once you program it in, okay? This is a phenomenal phenomenal telescope for uh if you're if you've been around astronomy a little bit it, it doesn't take that much time to learn how to use it. it it's far from a beginner telescope but it um like i said if you've had telescopes in the past uh it, it doesn't take that long to become familiar with the telescope itself the telescope has a sturdy and I mean sturdy tripod, okay? We have uh, a rack here where you can store your lenses and whatever else you need to store. The, the tripod legs, like I said, this is a very, very solid tripod base, okay? Solid aluminum legs. Um, it, you know, it, it's well built, folks. Uh, it has, it comes incorporated with a, a bubble, okay? A sight bubble here where it's kind of blurry. I know, I'm sorry, but that's um 
a, uh, a bubble to level your telescope with. Okay. Okay, now I want to cover quickly the, the, the potential that this telescope offers, okay? If you want to photograph the night sky, you simply take off the base. And this is so simple, okay? It simply screws off the back of the telescope, okay? The visual back one and one quarter in diameter, okay? Now, when you take your, 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 um, your lens assembly off here, remember, you've now opened, just like a good camera, okay? You're allowing a contamination of dust particles to enter into the telescope. So, you want to be really quick, and you want to make sure you are in a dust-free environment, okay? All right. Okay, now, the one thing we are going to do, we have to mount uh, a T-ring, okay? The T-adapter, as they call it. This is the T-adapter, okay? And the T-adapter then mounts right to the back of the telescope, okay? I'm doing this left-handed, and I am not left-handed, so I'm, you know, kind of... The T-adapter, which is used to mount the, cam the camera to the telescope, okay? Also, you have to acquire um, a T-ring, okay? This is a T-ring that mounts onto the T-adapter, okay? This T-adapter is specifically made for the Canon EOS series, all right? Okay, I'm going to try to do this and hold this, but what we're doing is we're, we're taking the camera, okay, and we're lining up the holes. What we've done is we've taken the um, camera and we've attached it to the T-ring itself right here, okay? All right, and you can see on this angle how it looks, okay? Real simple, we have a T-adapter, T-ring, and then it screws right into the camera. Now keep in mind, okay, a question that I had, okay? Without the lens here on either end, either the camera or a telescope, the only magnification that we're gonna have is the magnification from within the actual tube itself of the telescope, okay? But this alone will get us a lot closer than you could ever imagine, okay? So it, it does provide that opportunity. Now they do, and again, in the weeks ahead, they have a device that mounts in here, okay? That allows for magnification um, to the camera that you're shooting into, okay? But that's another step down the road here, all right? We're gonna be back here tonight as we photograph the uh, super moon. We're going to be uh, shooting it, and hopefully we're gonna have some killer photographs to share with you. Oh, on the uh, camera, your SLR camera, when you set it up, okay, you wanna make sure that it is in the uh, uh, B mode or manual mode, okay? You want to make sure you have, and I have one here, um, a, uh, a wireless release for the camera. Now also, I told you about the camera output here, okay, right there. They have a, a cable that they come with the telescope that plugs into here, and then it plugs into your firing cable for your camera. The computer, oh, the computer on board can then track any celestial object as it goes in the heavens, okay? And then it'll automatically trigger the camera to take pictures as it transverses that route through the heavens, okay? So if you're tracking the moon, okay, you can set this computer uh, and or your camera to take pictures continuously as it transverses on a particular path in the heavens, okay? So a lot of capabilities here and absolutely, and I mean this folks, okay, I can remember buying my first telescope paying over a thousand dollars, okay, and it was nothing. I mean, it was nothing compared to what we're showing here, okay, and, and guarantee this is well below a thousand bucks, okay. You can probably pick it up between, and I've seen it now already as low as five hundred dollars for a kit, so maybe even lower if you search on Amazon, okay. Um, and you can also do daytime photography um, because, again, it's open, so you know, if you want to do, if you're doing uh, bird watching, okay. You can set this thing up to photograph birds. Uh, it, it's a fantastic daytime telescope as well as a nighttime telescope, okay?